The 10 years old girl is known as the multi-talented girl in Korea, not only speaking fluent Spanish, but also decoding ancient books that even experts cannot understand. And these are memories from his previous life. The girl's name is G.U.M. At the age of 9 she discovered that she was so different, remembered 18 previous lives, all of her past filled with nostalgia, now her memories have been fully awakened. The thing she remembers most is her father who always came back drunk, after returning home, beat his wife and children like enemies, and now it is G.U.M. in her 19th life. She hates her father the most. She participates in many small and large competitions to earn money, all the money she earns is taken by her father. Not only the father, even G.U.M.'s brother stole the money she saved. Although G.U.M. secretly thought it wasn't a big deal, in that immature way of thinking, G.U.M. already hated this house. Early the next morning, G.U.M. quickly ran to find an aunt. This is the only way G.U.M. can do right now. But the person G.U.M. is looking for has passed away a long time ago, so how could he leave this note behind? To verify that, G.U.M. ran to the corner of the wall and clearly stated the exact time the photo was taken. She can also tell the situation and each name in the photo. It turns out that in her 17th life, G.U.M. was Uncle Kim Young-ho. When his illness became increasingly worse, Kim Young-ho told his niece that he would reincarnate and continue to take care of her. They even hooked their hands as hostages. Hearing these words, Kimi Kyung was a little skeptical. She asked G.U.M. what her father's name was, but this question seems to have troubled G.U.M. Because A.E. Kyung's father passed away very early, G.U.M. talked endlessly for a while, but it seemed like A.E. Kyung still didn't believe G.U.M. very much. Kim Young-ho didn't even get married to take care of his niece. But A.E. Kyung was still a little skeptical. A.E. Kyung sat down attentively listening to G.U.M. tell everything. In G.U.M.'s 18th life, G.U.M. was painting when suddenly a boy rushed towards her and knocked over her painting. G.U.M. looked at the boy's immature face, but the strange thing was that the boy didn't apologize and ran away. The next day G.U.M.'s mother took her to her best friend's house. Coincidentally, yesterday's boy is the child of G.U.M.'s mother's best friend. That boy's name is Sioha. G.U.M. approached the swimming pool when Sioha pulled her down. Then he smiled sinisterly and turned to leave. Sioha's appearance aroused G.U.M.'s curiosity. After changing clothes, G.U.M. saw that Sioha couldn't get the book from above so she went to help him, but Sioha ignored her kindness. G.U.M. was so angry that she dropped the book on his head. Sioha threatens that G.U.M. will definitely get into trouble. But G.U.M. is not afraid. G.U.M. took a few steps forward and took off her hair tie. Phew, the hair elastic had disappeared. Unexpectedly, Sioha felt extremely interested in this magic trick, and this fate has drawn the two children closer together. At this time, G.U.M.'s mother called her home. After this meeting, the two children felt very curious about each other. After that, the two children had the opportunity to play together more, until one day Sioha's mother was sick and lying in a hospital bed. She felt that her time was running out, but there is still a little son with no one to take care of him. Sioha's mother asked G.U.M. to take good care of him after she passes away. G.U.M. said nothing but just nodded in agreement. Sioha sat on this side, pulling a leaf to guess if his mother had passed away, but when the last leaf was left, he didn't dare count it. G.U.M. sitting next to her really wanted to know what the result was. Sioha was speechless. He told G.U.M. that he actually had memories of his previous life. At that time, his mother ran a hotel and Sioha clearly remembered that there was a turtle in a tank. Two children sat next to the pool and talked for a long time. Sioha suddenly turned and asked if you liked me. G.U.M. leaned into Sioha's ear and said, I'll say this when it's your birthday. It's really only when she's with Sioha that G.U.M. feels like she's a 12-year-old child. Not long after, Sioha's mother passed away. Sioha asked if she could see her mother again. G.U.M. shook her head and said, It's impossible because no one knows who they will become after reincarnation. At that time, each of us will also lose our memory. But instead of having to lie down in bed, it's better to reincarnate and live a new life. Hearing that, Sioha also felt very happy because her mother no longer had to live in illness. But anyway, losing her mother made Sioha extremely sad. G.U.M. agrees to stay by Sioha's side forever, but G.U.M. couldn't keep her promise because she passed away too early, so now G.U.M. wants to confirm if Sioha is still alive and well, but G.U.M.'s life in this life is so bad. Originally, she wanted to make a lot of money and then appear in front of him, but all that money was stolen by his family and is gone. When extremely desperate, G.U.M. ran to find A.E. Kyung. G.U.M. knows A.E. Kyung is a good person, maybe she can save G.U.M. But anyway, G.U.M. is also a good girl, she will soon earn her living expenses. A. E. Kyung was amused by G.U.M.'s words. A. E. Kyung decides to lend G.U.M. money. Before leaving, G.U.M. turned around and said to A. E. Kyung, You've endured a lot of hardships in the past. Please live with me for the rest of your life. 
After saying that, Ji Yuem ran out without looking back. A Kyung heard these words and froze, unable to react. It was only a moment later that she realized those were her uncle's words. Having overcome many hurdles, Ji Yuem finally reached the house where Seo Ha used to live. Ji Yuem clearly remembers on her birthday, she gave Seo Ha a gift box with a password. Ji Yuem told her that as long as Seo Ha was obedient, she would tell her where the key was. But as soon as she finished speaking, Seo Ha's expression changed. Because outside there was a truck moving very fast towards them. Right now it is raining heavily. Ji Yuem's mood was also dampened by the rain. After a while of mustering up her courage, Ji Yuem dared to ring the bell. It turns out that at that accident, Ji Yuem used her body to protect Seo Ha. Every time before her death, Ji Yuem wished that she was not reincarnated, or at least that she did not remember anything from her previous life. Unfortunately Seo Ha couldn't hear that sound, because the accident took away part of his senses. In the end, Ji Yuem passed away in Seo Ha's arms. She used her last strength to hold Seo Ha's hand. Ji Yuem stood at the door and didn't see anyone coming out so she jumped the fence and went inside. Ji Yuem ran past her familiar swimming pool and then ran to her dream house. Ji Yuem climbed the tree and saw Seo Ha sitting at the window. She silently thanked the gods that Seo Ha was still alive. Seo Ha inside the house discovers her stepmother trying on her mother's clothes. Seo Ha angrily ran to ask her father why she was so rude, but the father didn't care about Seo Ha's words and kicked him out. Ji Yuem came here just to confirm whether Seo Ha was still healthy or not. Seeing he happy makes Ji Yuem happy too. And when he's sad, Ji Yuem cannot hide her emotions. And one day suddenly, Ji Yuem couldn't see Seo Ha anymore. Only later did Ji Yuem learn that he had gone to Germany. Just like that, time moves forward eight years later. Currently, Ji Yuem has passed the university entrance exam. She is what she is today thanks to A. E. Kyung's efforts. Thanks to her, Ji Yuem was able to live through those difficult days. Finally, Ji Yuem gets news of Seo Ha. Ji Yuem is still trying to close the distance with Seo Ha. She smoothly joins Seo Ha's company. But the other side has no intention of returning home. Although talented Ji Yuem has many companies looking for her, she still decides to stay here, because Ji Yuem knows that in this place she has someone to meet. Her colleague said that after such a long time, maybe he had forgotten her. Ji Yuem herself isn't sure he even remembers her. Ji Yuem plans to go to the branch in Germany to work, but if she wants to go there, Ji Yuem must become a manager first. In other words, Ji Yuem must strive for promotion, but promotion takes a lot of time. So she had to think about that. Today, after finishing the new car testing session, after so many years, she still hasn't made a move on anyone, because the person Ji Yuem likes is not here. As Ji Yuem turned around to leave, Seo Ha called. When she learned his location, Ji Yuem ran all the way to me Grand Hotel. As soon as she walked forward, Ji Yuem's attention was drawn to the fish tank, because it has the turtle that Seo Ha mentioned. Ji Yuem couldn't help but move forward to look. At the same time, Seo Ha also stepped forward. They stood separated by a fish tank. It seems like both of them are looking for old memories. Fate always knows how to play tricks on people. Seo Ha and Ji Yuem looked at each other. Finally, at the most appropriate time, the two met, but Seo Ha turned around and left, leaving Ji Yuem behind. As she walked through the pool, Seo Ha remembered the old days when he played with her mother. There's also that older sister. Seo Ha walked into the factory and saw that the management was very bad. Employees are lazy. The chef is also not taking his work seriously. This hotel was founded by his mother. Now it's in the hands of his stepmother. Seo Ha won't allow things to fall apart like this. So he went to find his father. But his father doesn't care what his son does every day. Seo Ha put on her hearing aid and told her father about the situation at the hotel. Seo Ha is planning to save the hotel founded by his mother. But my father kicked me out very badly. He decided to return to Korea. They started from the recruitment stage. Coincidentally Ji Yuem's profile was at the top. She has a Korean doctorate and is fluent in eight languages. And Ji Yuem is also a leading automotive researcher. The two couldn't believe the other would apply for a job at the hotel. Furthermore, Ji Yuem also has plans to renovate the hotel. Seo Ha finds it best not to hire such a strange person. But his friend has such a weak opinion, why not give her a chance? Just like that, Ji Yuem appeared in front of Seo Ha again. Seo Ha wears a hearing aid. When she's sure Seo Ha can hear clearly, Ji Yuem suggests they go on a date. Ji Yuem's words caused Seo Ha to choke while drinking water. Ji Yuem told Seo Ha to remember that they had known each other before. The first time we met, we proposed a date. This action of GUM makes Seo Ha think that young people now live indiscriminately. Seo Ha keeps asking his best friend if he knows GUM. His friend curiously asked what happened. Seo Ha said that even if he told her, he definitely wouldn't believe it. Remembering what GUM said, Seo Ha's face turned red. 
It seems like the weather is unusually hot today. A Kyung heard that and immediately said that Ji Yum had been reincarnated for 19 lives and still couldn't control herself. Ji Yum said that she had been reincarnated for 19 lives. Of course she knew what to say. There are people you should hide and there are people you should tell frankly. But as for Sioha, she didn't dare to guess. A Kyung heard that and advised Ji Yum that if she had come this far, it would be better to take one more step. Here, Sioha has returned home. Since that accident, Sioha has always been afraid of sitting in the back seat. When his best friend heard that, he immediately advised him that there were some things he had to learn to forget. At this moment, Sioha received a phone call but he did not dare answer. Sioha then asked her best friend to stop Cho Won. Ji Suk here came to find Cho Won to tell him about Sioha's return to the country. He didn't understand why Sioha's father wanted to quickly close that hotel. Cho Won guessed that Sioha's stepmother did it. Furthermore, Cho Won has always liked Sioha. The next day, Sioha went to check the area near the hotel. The noise on the street made Sioha find it difficult to breathe. Suddenly a truck rushed towards him. Suddenly, memories of Ji Yum from the accident that day appeared in his mind. Sioha was so scared that she cut his finger into the post. At that moment, Ji Yum appeared and pulled Sioha away. She turned her head and looked back as if someone was following her. In his mouth, she kept saying that if she was caught, her life would be over. Just like that, they held hands and ran forward. Not knowing how far she could run, Sioha held Ji Yum's hand tightly and ran. Ji Yum arrived so promptly that she knew Sioha had just panicked. She understands Sioha's condition very well. That was in the 10th life. In that life the war was extremely chaotic. People's bodies lie everywhere like a living hell. Ji Yum was lucky to survive and instinctively just ran forward. She ran for a long time and didn't know where she ran to. When she stopped, Ji Yum discovered that she was surrounded by an immense grass hill. According to Ji Yum, when you're scared, just run quickly and you won't be scared anymore. Sioha felt like Sioha had experienced this herself. Ji Yum quickly explains that she saw those things in the book. Ji Yum leaned close to Sioha's face and told him to marry her. That question made Sioha startled. Why did Ji Yum confess her love so suddenly? According to Ji Yum, it was a clue to check if Sioha remembered her. Actually, in Ji Yum's previous life, the person who confessed first was Sioha. They even clasped their hands to show their promise. Ji Yum is immersed in the sweet past, but does not know that the next morning her rival comes to the door. Ji Yum went to the company today to confirm that she was still working, but as soon as she went inside, Ji Suk stopped her and caused trouble. Relying on the dancing techniques trained from her previous life, Ji Suk was socked, and this scene was seen by Sioha. But Ji Suk mocked Sioha for not being so cold, but Sioha didn't care about him. He then invited Ji Yum, who had just arrived, into his private office to talk. Ji Suk said Sioha was abandoned by the corporation, and then prepared to take over a hotel that was about to be closed. Seeing that, Ji Yum interrupted. She threatened Ji Suk that if he still did that, she would definitely not let him go. After warning Ji Suk, Ji Yum followed Sioha into the office. Suddenly, Cho Won also entered Sioha's office. As soon as Ji Yum looked, she realized that this was someone she also knew. It turns out that Cho Won couldn't contact Sioha, so he came all the way here to find him. Do Yun proactively stepped forward to block Sioha, but Ji Yum noticed something very different in Cho Won's eyes. But after meeting Cho Won, Sioha told Ji Yum to leave for another day and talk about work. Ji Yum told Sioha that you should hire me too. As long as I can work at a hotel, I'm willing to do anything. Hearing that, Sioha couldn't understand why Ji Yum was so persistent. Ji Yum replied that it was not necessary to say it clearly now, waiting for the right time, he would definitely understand everything. Before leaving, Ji Yum gave Sioha a file of documents. But after a while, Ji Yum remembered that she forgot to give something to Sioha. It was a coincidence that Sioha had a chance to pass by. It seems like they were quite destined. Ji Yum gives Sioha the remaining item, which is a picture of the hotel when business was booming. At that time, the hotel was being run by Sioha's mother. There are countless visitors every day. After seeing the photo, she was accepted for the job. Ji Yum told Sioha, whenever you need help, I will be there promptly. This sentence Ji Yum once said in her previous life. On the way home, Ji Yum especially visited Cho Won's garden, looking at the little girl who had grown up like this. The next day while at work, Sioha encounters the general manager's son. He was drunk and was causing chaos in the lobby. According to the hotel's rules of not drinking alcohol, Sioha insists on asking him to leave. But these people thought that Sioha had just arrived here, so he arrogantly said his name. Moreover, he also teased Ji Yum. Sioha saw that he couldn't stand it anymore so he kicked the man's leg a few times. At that moment, the director suddenly appeared. She didn't care about her son. Instead, call Sioha to the office to talk. Ji Yum remembers this person. She used to stand next to Sioha's father. She also caught Sioha's father having sex with that woman. 
This woman is actually not simple. At first she said that she helped Sioha's mother a lot. Furthermore, she denied that her son was rude. Sioha was determined to run the hotel well this time. After saying his plan, he turned around and left. The woman immediately changed her expression and scolded Sioha for being uneducated. Back at his office, Sioha begins to organize her work. Sioha thinks that because GUM's expertise is good, it's okay for her to step back and help everyone. GUM got angry but then thought better of it and stopped. But before she could be happy for long, Cho Won appeared again. Cho Won came to ask GUM to help him mix up the files, because he was afraid that if Sioha found out, he would directly fire her. Even though GUM agreed, she still felt a little uncomfortable. She had just put the documents in the box when Du Yun discovered her. Du Yun leaned close to GUM's ear and said that he knew her motive. Unexpectedly, GUM also used that method. She admitted that she did as he said. But anyway, she absolutely would not harm Sioha. Looking at the two people outside, Sioha inside the room was very curious. But Sioha still had to pretend like he didn't care. He picked up the phone and told Duyun to work quickly, but inside Sioha was still curious about what they were saying to each other. Duyun also has no intention of hiding it from Sioha. He recounted the content of the conversation to Sioha. When coming home from work, Sioha remembered the words GUM had said, and what happened a few days ago. He feel like that has happened before. Sioha quickly searched the closet and found a towel. At this time, GUM was at her old company when he received a phone call from Sioha. Sioha said she wanted to meet GUM. It seems he remembered who she was. Hearing that, GUM ran like crazy to Sioha. They went for a walk together. Actually, the two of them are misunderstanding each other's intentions. Sioha took out her handkerchief. It turned out that Sioha was in a very bad mood that day. That day, GUM also followed Sioha, who had just skipped class. Sioha was dragging his tired feet on the road. They passed by construction site. The image of workers smashing the wall attracted Sioha when the workers took a break. Sioha picked up a hammer and started smashing. The image of Sioha frantically smashing things made GUM a little worried. At the same time, the workers returned. Sioha stood there, not knowing what to do. GUM saw that and ran over to pull Sioha towards him. The two of them kept running like that, not knowing how far they ran. Finally, they arrived at a park before Sioha bewilderedly asked who GUM was. But GUM didn't answer, just smiled stupidly. No matter what she did, GUM looked at Sioha in a passionate way. GUM's eyes looking at Sioha became more and more special, making him think she was a weirdo. Suddenly, GUM discovered that Sioha's hand was injured so she ran towards him. GUM treated Sioha's wound while complaining about him. Why did you skip class and run to that wall? GUM even took off the scarf around his neck to bandage Sioha's wound. By now, Sioha is certain that GUM is that girl. GUM's attitude and eyes have not changed at all. GUM still kept that attitude and told Sioha to marry me. Sioha couldn't understand why they had only met each other a few times when they were children and persisted until now. But in reality, Sioha felt extremely happy. On the other side, Director Jang Yunoke is complaining about Sioha. Sioha's father calls Du Yun to tell him to keep a close eye on Sioha and remember not to skip the initial mission. Du Yun don't want to do it, but Sioha's father threatens him that if he doesn't do it, he will be fired. Du Yun had no other choice but to agree. The day ahead is April 23rd. Sioha dresses very politely but cannot call Du Yun. With the current situation, he could only call GUM. At this time, GUM was sitting and talking in front of the towel with Ae Kyung. Suddenly she received a phone call from Sioha. The two of them were a little happy to see that. But in reality Sioha didn't want GUM to pick up the phone. GUM received the phone call and couldn't hide her joy. She also drove at lightning speed to meet Sioha. It turns out Sioha wanted to ask GUM to take him to a place he didn't want anyone to know about. At this moment, Cho Won called. Sioha still didn't pick up the phone. A moment later, the two reached their destination. GUM felt extremely curious. Sioha said that there are things it's better to confide in strangers than in acquaintances. GUM vows to become a stranger, but Sioha still doesn't confide in her because he doesn't feel sincerity. The two of them went to the back of the mountain. Sioha told her to just stand here and wait for her. Sioha walked up to a grave and knelt down. Sioha's eyes started to turn red. It turned out that was GUM's in his previous life. He don't know if GUM is still okay now. He blamed himself for not coming here often in the past. It seems like now GUM is seeing young Sioha. The sound of Sioha sobbing soundlessly made GUM unable to help but turn away. GUM sat down on the ground like he had no strength left. It's been so many years, but GUM only feels his own pain. But each life is different, GUM met people from his previous life. Moreover, she can also see the attitude they have towards her. This feeling is both special and strange. GUM saw Sioha kneeling in front of his grave and immediately turned around and left. Sioha went through countless sufferings. 
So on the way back GUM took him to a forest of flowers, because beautiful scenery will make people's mood more comfortable. GUM hopes that when he feels extremely depressed, he can remember what he saw today. But who would have thought that Sioha would refuse GUM's kindness? Sioha also told GUM that he likes older girls. GUM immediately told him not to judge by his appearance. When the two of them were about to drive home, suddenly a truck came. The incident from that year once again appeared in Sioha's mind. GUM's passing is still fresh in his mind. That excitement made Sioha feel short of breath. Seeing this, GUM immediately got out of the car to reassure him. She told him not to worry too much and relax. But GUM also did not know that his passing was a great loss to those still alive. GUM recalls his 17th life, Ae Kyung was only 10 years old, but had to be much more mature than his peers. She had to take care of her sick uncle all by herself. She was afraid that when her uncle passed away, she would no longer have any relatives. So every day she cried loudly, praying for my uncle to live a little longer. The uncle promised that after reincarnation he would continue to protect Ae Kyung, but actually Ae Kyung does not understand the meaning of reincarnation. That day Ae Kyung cried extremely pitifully. Not long after, her uncle also passed away. That little girl has grown up like this now. GUM sighed that her parents died early, and she wouldn't live long. Thank God that my granddaughter is still alive and healthy. Even though life is difficult, Ae Kyung feels very happy. Her uncle once again appeared in her life. This is also his biggest wish. Ae Kyung reminds GUM that today is Sioha's birthday. GUM seemed to be thinking of something. Then she ran into the rain. It turns out that in their 18th life, the two of them promised each other that on Sioha's birthday they would go to the amusement park, although it cannot fill the void that Sioha's mother left behind. But GUM decided to stay by his side until his last breath. However, for Sioha, his birthday made him feel even more sad. Whenever he blow out the birthday candles, he will remember that sister. GUM arrived at Sioha's door. She told Sioha that she had something important that she forgot to mention. I like you. This statement from GUM reminded Sioha of her deceased sister. But before Sioha could think too long, Cho Won opened the door and walked out. The atmosphere now became extremely awkward. Sioha could only say that there was a guest at home, so GUM should go home first. It turns out Cho Won came here to celebrate Sioha's birthday. But Sioha told Cho Won to leave her house as soon as possible. But Cho Won understood that Sioha was still heartbroken over his sister's passing. But anyway, this happened a long time ago. It's time for you to live for reality. Cho Won really wanted to bear this pain for Sioha. When Cho Won left, GUM still stood still. Cho Won gives GUM a birthday cake. It took her four hours to make this cake. GUM asks Cho Won if he likes Sioha, but Cho Won replied, Why should I tell you? GUM said that she likes Sioha. Cho Won said that if she liked Sioha, would she let him go? GUM returned home in despair. A Kyung told GUM why not take this opportunity to tell the truth. It's better than being in a situation where sisters are fighting each other. GUM said that it was all due to his early reincarnation that caused him to be like this. In her 18th life, she also did not live to the age she should have lived, so there is a high possibility that there is something wrong with this. Early the next morning, Sioha felt GUM very attractive. Even when talking, he felt a little confused. Cho Won here received Du Yun's phone call. He informed Cho Won that she had been accepted to work. Hearing this news Cho Won felt very happy, but the item that Sioha is planning to order is not approved. Du Yun asked why he didn't ask his father for help. But Sioha said she would save this star of hope for last. When there is no more way out, we will use it. Sioha was looking for his uncle. As soon as my uncle saw you, he immediately guessed that Sioha was short of money, so that night the uncle took Sioha to get to know his two friends. But Du Yun was a little worried about him. Du Yun proactively went to the hotel to pick up Sioha, but accidentally came across the annoying Ji Suk. He said his father was a normal person. Moreover, he died too early. I have lived until today relying on scholarship money, he said as he stepped on Du Yun's phone. However, these scenes were seen by Sioha. Sioha picked up a bottle of wine and poured it on Ji Suk's head. However, Ji Suk is still not defeated. He grabbed Sioha's collar. When Sioha was about to raise his fist to hit Ji Suk in the face, Du Yun stopped him. Sioha understood, so he stopped. He threatened Ji Suk, if he was still a human being, he would be more reasonable. Du Yun wanted to stop Sioha because he was afraid that things would get worse because of him. Sioha pulled him back and told him that we should go eat together. The next morning, when Sioha went to work, he discovered that the company had arranged the type of flowers he liked. So he immediately asked GUM if she did. But GUM said it wasn't her. When she arrived, someone had already installed it. At this time, Cho Won walked in from outside. She introduced everyone that she would be an employee here from now on. Sioha called Du Yun into the room to talk. Cho Won outside the door also heard the sound. 
When Cho Wan heard it, she felt heartbroken. Cho Wan said goodbye to Ji Yuem and quickly ran out. But before she could run two steps, she sat down on the ground and cried. Ji Yuem chased her outside and saw her back. Cho Wan asks Ji Yuem to help her convey the word to Du Yun and Si Ha. She herself tried her best to help them. She wants to do her best so the hotel can revive. Just as Cho Wan was about to leave, Ji Yuem called her back. Because she wanted to be sure of one thing. Is Cho Wan the person Si Ha once loved so much? Seeing her big sister go to this school made Ji Yuem feel very happy. Ji Yuem asked Cho Wan what he liked about that person. It turns out the two cousins have similar personalities. Cho Wan from the first time they met, she liked him. Apparently when he was just a kid he knew how to take care of his younger brother. Furthermore, his driving technique is also extremely good. Ji Yuem understands that the person she likes is Du Yun. Ji Yuem was able to breathe a sigh of relief. Cho Wan then said that Ji Yuem was actually the one suffering. Cho Wan takes out a photo and says that the person in red is Seo Ha's first love. Ji Yuem now realizes that her love rival is herself. Remember that year, when the ceremony ended, Du Yun carried his younger brother on his back and discovered Seo Ha crying pitifully. From then on Du Yun noticed him. Suddenly, when the two of them were in high school, the day Seo Ha skipped class and met Du Yun, that day Seo Ha asked Du Yun to give Cho Wan an umbrella. And from that day on, the two became friends. So when school ended, Du Yun gave the umbrella to Cho Wan. Cho Wan also took that opportunity to confess his love to Du Yun. Cho Wan praised his sister as someone who knows everything. Wherever she goes, she receives applause from everyone. Since the day she left this life, the world is no longer as bustling as before, Cho Wan said as he suddenly raised her wine cup. On the way home, Cho Wan lay on Ji Yuem's lap and continued to sleep. Ji Yuem couldn't hold back her emotions. She raised her hand to caress Cho Wan's hair. Cho Wan also seemed to sense something. Seo Ha felt like she was a bit too much towards Cho Wan. He held a box of food and walked to her door. But after standing for so long, he didn't have enough courage to ring the bell. On the way back he passed a small shop. Seo Ha stood on the street remembering the words Ji Yuem once said, The most valuable thing in this world is time. So Seo Ha decided to buy some gifts and go back. At this time, Ji Yuem also brought Cho Wan to the door. Taking the opportunity that Cho Wan's mother was not out yet, Ji Yuem ran quickly from that place. But Ji Yuem was discovered by her mother. The mother remembered the last time Ji Yuem stood in front of her house for a long time. When she heard what Ji Yuem just said, she immediately suspected that Ji Yuem was her daughter, because her daughter had also said before, if she passed away, her parents would not be sad. After being reincarnated, I will return to visit everyone, so she also waited for her daughter for a long time. Because of that, Ji Yuem couldn't hold back his emotions and hugged her mother tightly. However, the scene just now was just her imagination. Coincidentally, when Seo Ha turned around, she saw all of this. The boy carrying firewood was on his way home. Suddenly, past life memories were awakened. In the memory of his mother whom he missed every night, he did not know if this was real or a dream. But he's sure of one thing, he misses his mother very much. So he ran over and jumped into the lap of a woman sitting on the porch. The scared woman asked someone to drag the boy out. The boy reminded himself not to do this again next time. In her next life, the mother soon discovered that there was something unusual about her daughter. The girl talked nonsense all day but the mother also seemed to see through her daughter's thoughts. So she told her daughter she was the most beautiful and intelligent child. No matter who she turns into, I still love you. Hearing these words from his mother, Ji Yuem also began to open her heart. Ji Yuem promised that if she were reincarnated, she would definitely return to find her mother. In this 19th life, Ji Yuem is trying to express his nostalgia through his imagination, but Seo Ha stopped her. Ji Yuem now remembered how careless he had been. She quickly explained that she was Ji Yuem. At this moment her mother also came out. Seo Ha saw that and pulled Ji Yuem's hand and ran away from that place. The two held hands and ran for a long time before stopping. Seo Ha was curious as to what Ji Yuem was standing at the door doing. Ji Yuem explained that when he saw Cho Wan's mother, he suddenly remembered the mother who left him when he was young. But Ji Yuem doesn't hate his mother at all because each person has their own life. Seo Ha felt like she was reading an ancient book when talking to Ji Yuem. They was going to a convenience store to eat noodles. During the conversation Ji Yuem said some things that made Seo Ha feel very curious. Ji Yuem told Seo Ha that next time if you miss her, just say so. Ji Yuem felt that Seo Ha was in love with him but didn't dare say it. So she pressed her hand close to Seo Ha's chest. Does this fast heartbeat mean you like me? But the sound of the door pulled the two back to reality. On the way home, Ji Yuem's image always appeared in Seo Ha's mind. He suspected that he had been brainwashed. Ji Yuem was walking home and happened to pass by a man. The man glanced at Ji Yuem who had just passed him. Ji Yuem also seemed to feel something strange. But then she didn't think much and turned around. And he still stood looking at Ji Yuem. When Ji Yuem returned home, he told Ae Kyung that he had seen his mother from his previous life. But she didn't feel as sad as she had imagined. 
Ji Yuem thinks that Siyoha needs someone to help him forget people from the past, so she decided to walk with Siyoha in this life. At the same time, Siyoha decided to hire Cho Wen to work at the hotel. Siyoha wished that if he got lost, he could remind himself to wake up. He always saw the image of his sister at GUM. On this side, a strange man is opening a wooden box and taking out something. Du Yun and Siyoha go to Cho Wan's flower garden to test her working ability. But when Cho Wan saw GUM, she immediately remembered GUM's strange actions last night. The strange thing is that GUM even brought Cho Wan home with his mother, but no matter how drunk she gets, Cho Wan will not ask to go back to her mother's house. Even though she had only met GUM a few times, she felt like they had known each other for a long time. Hearing this, GUM almost admitted that in her past life she was Cho Wan's sister, not sure if she was worried or scared. She knocked over the cup of tea. Two people outside heard a loud noise and ran in. Cho Wan invited the two of them to stay for a cup of tea. GUM decided that from now on they will officially pursue Siyoha. She will confess her love to him three times. If she gets rejected all three times, she will give up. Siyoha told the two girls to confess so he could refuse. But GUM told him to give himself another chance. I will definitely make you shake. GUM received a phone call from her younger brother asking for money. GUM didn't think much and immediately turned off the phone. At this time, Director John's son also appeared in front of Siyoha, but was directly thrown out of the hotel by Siyoha. Siyoha then came to find Director Jang to inform her that he had kicked her son out. When hearing these things, Director Jang was a little angry. After going out, Siyoha told Du Yun to get the hotel's estimate documents for the last three years for him. Du Yun took the opportunity to sneak into the accounting room. He brought back the documents Siyoha needed. At this time, everyone has finished work. Du Yun had an appointment with Siyoha's father, so he went first. Because she was still alone, Siyoha had to leave. On the way home he saw someone chasing GUM. Very quickly this person grabbed GUM's hair. It turns out that this person is none other than her brother. GUM gave him some money and then broke off the relationship. But when he was in need, he came to bother her. Siyoha found it unbearable and went to stop him. GUM kicked her annoying little brother. He panicked and ran away. GUM did not tell Siyoha about this. Siyoha saw through GUM's sadness. So he invited her to go drinking. GUM sat down, she curiously asked why he didn't ask about the matter just now. Siyoha tells her to say what she wants. Today he will be her drinking partner. After drinking for a while, they started to get drunk. Look she's smiling foolishly, Siyoha also felt a bit shaken. On the way home, GUM saw Siyoha unable to walk. She suggested that the two of them sit and rest for a bit, but Siyoha stood there bewildered. GUM took off his coat and put it on the ground for Siyoha to sit on. This moment reminds Siyoha of his sister. She has done that before. Siyoha fell silent for a moment. What are you thinking so stupidly? Siyoha doesn't understand why every time he sees GUM, she remembers her sister. He began to caress GUM's face. Then he couldn't help but pull her closer to him. To avoid regretting it too late, Hai Yuem told Siyoha to control it. GUM said that when sober, they would talk. Siyoha leaned his head on GUM's shoulder and told about the accident in the past. The sister that Siyoha liked died because she protected him. It took a very long time for them to be rescued. Siyoha felt her sister's body immediately get colder. From then on, just being in close contact with another person made him feel pain. On this side, Duyin said everything in this time of Siyoha to his dad. Siyoha's father doesn't understand why he hired GUM, because her family relationship is extremely complicated. Duyun denied that she was not that type of person. Siyoha's father gave Duyun a lump of money and told him to chase GUM away. Compared to others, Duyun understands this better than anyone. It turned out that Duyun was the son of the bus driver that year. GUM cannot contact Duyun at this time. The taxi driver saw her knocking Siyoha and just kept going straight without stopping. At this time, GUM saw the old man's cart in front of his eyes. In her 16th life, she was a carriage driver, so she is very experienced in this. Suddenly, due to an incident, Siyoha fell out of the car. GUM had no other choice but to call Cho Wan. Because GUM alone cannot lift Siyoha up. Cho Wan opened the back door to let Siyoha in. But GUM quickly stopped her because if Siyoha woke up while walking, something would definitely happen. Because before, when he was sitting in the back seat, he had an accident. That's why he tried to sit in the front seat. But Cho Wan did not know this. Very quickly the two brought Siyoha to home, but neither of them knows what his house password is. So Cho Wan called Du Yun to ask him. 
The home password is 0423. It was very difficult for the two girls to bring Sioha into the house. He suddenly remembered the night of the traffic accident that year. Sioha was dizzy looking at the GUM in front of her as her deceased sister. Sioha instinctively pulled GUM's hand back. The mouth kept saying don't leave me. Only now did Cho Wen feel Sioha's pain. When she was young, she used to scold Sioha for being the one who harmed her older sister. Cho Wen burst into tears without a sound. GUM did not know how Sioha had lived during this time. GUM found the item he gave Sioha in his previous life. Seeing that item, GUM could not control his emotions. That night, the mysterious man arrived at Aikyun's door. GUM is now falling asleep. In her dream, she saw a person holding a bell. It seems that in the dream there was also a massacre. In fact, GUM has dreamed of this scene many times. But strangely, whenever GUM had this dream, Aikyun felt uncomfortable. On this side, Sioha is also dreaming. In the dream GUM was ringing his doorbell, but when he opened the door, it was his deceased sister. The next scene is her last words before leaving. Suddenly the tinnitus woke Sioha up again. Sioha rolled over in pain and fell down. Coincidentally, Duyun heard it when he came to pick him up from work, but when Duyun asked him what was wrong, Sioha refused to say. He just said he wanted to rest for a day. Duyun called Cho Wen to ask about Sioha's situation. Wait until Du Yun had just left, then Ji Yuem actually came to visit him, but Seo Han did not react and pretended like there was no one in the house. Ji Yuem had no choice but to go to work when he met a girl with short hair. They topped a boy from looking around and then went out into the street. But right now Seo Han's insides are changing. He always feels that when he is with Ji Yuem, all his troubles disappear. Furthermore, he feel extremely peaceful. He don't know if this is called liking or not. And he don't know if he like her or not. Seo Han told Du Yun what he was wondering about. Sioha said that every time he sees GUM he feels like he misses his deceased sister. It seems he was going crazy. The next day, Cho Wen asked him to help her set an appointment with Sioha, because she has something to tell Sioha. She said that the two of them would go to the beach together in the afternoon. Then Cho Wen told Ji Yun to tell this news to GUM. Just like that, the four of them went to the beach together. And this is the first time GUM confessed his love to Sioha. Do you agree to become my boyfriend? This is my first confession, so just answer slowly. Sioha heard that and thought about it. GUM asked Sioha to go out with her. Before waiting for Sioha to react, she held Sioha's hand tightly. Cho Wan and Du Yun saw this scene and thought they were on a date. Cho Wan also mustered up the courage to confess his love to Du Yun, but Du Yun ignored Cho Wan's words. Suddenly it started to rain and everyone went to Cho Wan's house to get caught in the rain. They decided that when the rain stopped, they would go home, but not long after, GUM went back to sleep. Cho Wan always sat next to GUM. Cho Wan then went to Sioha's place. She remembers when she was a child. Cho Wan often blamed Sioha that he had harmed his sister, but she didn't know that he was also in a lot of pain. He often thinks that if she were still alive now, she would probably be very similar to Cho Wan. This scene was coincidentally seen by Du Yun. He didn't say anything but turned around and left. At the same time, A Kyung's chest suddenly ached. Coincidentally, the mysterious man was also visiting at this time. He came because he wanted to work here. A Kyung suddenly fell to the ground. GUM on this side was also woken up by the thundering. GUM is in a familiar home, recalling the days of playing with his younger sister. She searched for the doll hidden in a cabinet box, but unknown to Cho Wan, this scene was seen. Cho Wan couldn't believe his eyes. Why does GUM know so clearly the location of his home's belongings? She even knows the location of the two sisters' secret storage. GUM, why you know this place? Sioha often passed by and saw the scene, but he just quietly went out. Cho Wan still kept asking if GUM knew this place. But GUM still refused to admit it and used a bunch of excuses to distract Cho Wan. Very quickly GUM caught up with Sioha who was walking in the rain. At this moment, Sioha felt that GUM was very strange. She said he was her first love. But Sioha rejected GUM. Because he is afraid that one day she will end up like his sister. A Kyung here just woke up from a coma. The strange man was always by her side. His name is Min Ji a Kyung warned Min Ji not to tell anyone. Min Ji looked at A Kyung's worried eyes and immediately agreed. The next morning, Cho Wan asked Du Yun, Seo Ha and Ji Yuem, how did those two know each other? Du Yun only knows that because Ji Yuem took the initiative to go to the hotel to apply for a job, and it seems like the two of them knew each other before. That night, Cho Wan came home and stared at the doll. Remember when my sister said it was the gift she loved the most? The more Cho Wan thought about it, the more he felt like something wasn't quite right. Sioha here came to find Director Jang. There are some documents that do not match reality. Director Jang believes that someone was dishonest. That means the leader is incompetent. 
She told Sioha to immediately fire him. However, Sioha soon spoke to the person in charge. But he didn't want to admit his mistakes alone, so he denounced the person behind him. When Director Jang heard this, he was extremely angry. She immediately accused Sioha's mother of not being honest in business. Sioha heard these words and felt extremely restrained so he left. He accidentally came across GUM outside. Director Jang was angry and also went out. She shouted that she would definitely not be bullied. Then he directly attacked Sioha but hit GUM. Suddenly Sioha's uncle appeared. And Director Jang leave this place. In the evening, Sioha asks Du Yun's younger brother out for dinner. As he walked out of the company, a car stopped. A few guys got down from the car and walked towards Sioha. Among those people was GUM's brother. Because he just caused trouble, he had to go on a trip with them. At this time GUM also received a message. If you don't want your loved ones to get hurt, come here quickly. They also sent a photo of Sioha to her. On this side, the group of people took Sioha to a scrapyard. It turns out GUM's brother lied that she will pay his debt. But Sioha's attitude was also extremely uncooperative. He used Sioha to threaten GUM. It seemed he also understands GUM too much. Sioha didn't care about his business so he turned around and left. Sioha even dared to fight with them. At that moment, a boy arrived to rescue him. They run very fast when they hear the police. GUM also rushed like flying. Furthermore, she also brought a speaker to wear across her body. It was she who raised the false alarm. GUM sorry Sioha for all this. Sioha told her not to worry too much because he could handle it himself. Suddenly Bok Dong spoke up. GUM and Bok Dong hands happily as if they had known each other for a long time, making Sioha next to him just hold his tongue. Cho Wan feel more and more unstable here. It seems she was becoming certain that GUM is my sister. And Du Yun thought that she approached Sioha had bad intentions. Du Yun's thoughts scared Cho Wan. Sioha's three people are eating barbecue here. Sioha suggests going to get some air together. Sioha doesn't understand why GUM just stay with him like that. Actually, Sioha was afraid that she would get hurt because of him. But GUM don't care at all. GUM asked Sioha what was it about his first love that made him like her so much. Sioha also didn't hide it at all. He said her eyes were very sparkling. What about your eyes? Sioha pushes GUM go far and go into the meat shop. But actually he is feeling embarrassed. At this moment GUM received a phone call from Cho Wan. She wanted to take an appointment with GUM. As soon as GUM sat down, Cho Wan immediately became suspicious. Recently GUM approached her to inquire about her sister's situation. And even pretending to be her sister to win Sioha's heart. Cho Wan also emphasized that everything she told him was all planned. But do you know how painful it is for me to lose a loved one? The more Cho Wan speaks, the more anger she shows. She warned if GUM if she didn't stop, she won't let it go. Having said that, she turned around and leave. Seeing that, she quickly followed. Cho Wan sees it, she said many things. She thought GUM is her deceased sister. Because a stranger like GUM and found out Cho Wan's home address, knew where they hid the secret item. Furthermore, he touched her head affectionately. It sounds crazy, but Cho Wan really wants GUM could be my sister. So she really felt hurt when she was deceived, seeing Cho Wan crying in front of her. GUM can't suppress her personal emotions. So GUM confessed her true identity to Cho Wan. But Cho Wan believes that GUM are deceiving her, then angrily left. GUM pulled her hand back to explain. She remember all the beautiful memories of them. Actually GUM go back to the old house but don't dare go close. She only stand in the distance and look at the silhouettes of her mother and sister. Do you have two moles on the back of his neck and a scar on his back? That's because the mirror fell on her body, she was injured. Because of this, my mother and I cried a lot. But even Cho Wan does not know these things clearly. Because the reincarnation time was so short, she didn't dare believe that she was her sister. GUM tell this to A. E. Kyung. She was afraid that her end would be as pathetic as her previous lies. If Cho Wan tells this to her mother and Sioha, what should I do? But GUM doesn't care about that because she believes her sister is not blind and has long lips. Suddenly Min Ji's phone rang. At this point, the two of them realized there was someone else here. It turned out that he and that short-haired girl knew each other. That girl's name is Hana. They seem to be talking about something very serious. And her target is Sioha. Here, Cho Wan go home with her mother. Cho Wan want to confirm what GUM said true or not, who would have thought it was true? Only now did Cho Wan believe that reincarnation is real. She really wanted to know what kind of person her sister was, but her mother said nothing. The next day when she went to work, she asked Sioha if she believed in past lives or not, my sister also asked me this question before. When she heard that, 
Cho Wan was very curious about what her sister had said. Seeing Seo Ha expression, Cho Wan realized that she was probably too careless. Could it be that I hurt him? Cho Wan asked Seo Ha why she didn't see Ji Yu today. It turns out Ji Yu took a long break to attend to personal matters. Remembering the memories of her fifth life, she understood the truth. So she arrived at the door of a company for heavy roles. She came here to meet the boss there. Based on some martial arts from his previous life, Ji Yu was invited into the office. Ji Yu put a gift box on the table. Inside was an antique vase enough to repay his brother's debt. The boss, seeing that, of course agreed with Ji Yu Ji Yu threatening these people not to annoy her life next time. She also carefully made the boss sign a debt cancellation confirmation form. Ji Yu walking in front, his brother secretly followed behind and found out. It turned out that the incident that year was not an accident, but was intentionally created by the boss. That day, Seo Ha went to Ae Kyung's shop. As soon as she entered, she heard a strange conversation between Ae Kyung and Ji Yu M. Ae Kyung hastily explained that it was due to Ji Yu M's personality. This side Ji Yu M's mother like a lost soul. She called Cho Won and asked her why she was asking about her sister. Cho Won said it's because she wants to understand her better. Her mother replied that she is an autistic person. All day she only talks about reincarnation. She also said that if she died, she would come back to find her mother. But she has been waiting for 24 years and has not seen anything. Cho Won remembers what Ji Yu M once said and her strange actions. Cho Won couldn't help but miss his sister. So she went to see Ji Yu M right at night. Cho Won chose to believe Ji Yu M this time. If you find out I lied to you, don't blame me. Then the two sisters rushed to hug each other passionately. But this scene was seen by Min Ji I standing far away. He quickly called Han Na, informing her about Ji Yu M reunited with her previous life sisters. If so, things will be extremely complicated. Early the next morning, A Yi Kyung dressed neatly. Because today Min Ji I invited her to dinner. After they left the house, Ji Yu M went into Min Ji I's room to check. Ji Yu M discovered there was a bell inside. As soon as Ji Yu M picked it up, the memory came back. She didn't understand what happened. It turns out Ji Yu M's brother found Seo Ha. He told Seo Ha that the accident that year was not accidental. When Seo Ha heard this news, he was extremely panicked. Since Ji Yu M holding that bell, her dream about her past life became clearer. The next day, at work, in front of everyone, Cho Won called Ji Yu M his sister. Ji Yu M quickly pulled Cho Won to an empty corner of the stairs. She instructed her not to call her sister anymore. Now her identity is Ji Yu M. When the two looked up they saw Du Yun standing above. Cho Won saw this and immediately went up to stop him. Cho Won asked how long he had been here. Du Yun also very honestly recounted their conversation word for word. But he did not believe in reincarnation. Ji Yu M stopped Du Yun from letting him go so easily. Ji Yu M said that if Du Yun kept going like that, it would be like considering her a deceiver. Hearing this, Cho Won also felt a bit angry. In your eyes, am I that stupid? Finally, the three of them agreed to keep today's matter a secret. Seo Ha here, after hearing the story from Ji Yu M's brother, he decided to go find the boss. Seo Ha plans to go there alone without Du Yun accompanying him, but while going, coincidentally, Ji Yu M saw him. Seo Ha talked about knowing that the accident was not accidental. I've given you one week. After speaking, he turned around and left. As soon as Seo Ha left, Ji Yu M drive again. As soon as she entered the door, she heard the boss tell the person behind the story that Seo Ha had just arrived. Seo Ha now received a text message. It turned out that Du Yun was the son of the driver that year. The accident that year claimed the lives of two people. One is the sister he loves. Two is Seo Ha's close uncle. Seo Ha was lucky to escape that accident. Ji Yu M pinned the man's neck to the wall. Ji Yu M forced the man to reveal the name of the person behind this, but he replied that whether I said it or not said it now, I was going to meet death. There is no other way Ji Yu M just had to let him go. At the same time, Director Jang took his son to meet Seo Ha's father. She plans to recommend her son to work at the company. At first he did not agree. But after the secretary came in and whispered something to Seo Ha's father, he finally thought of Director Jang's son. After Director Jang left, a bald man walked in. Director Jang looked at this person somewhat familiarly, so she ordered Seo Ha's uncle to check who this person was. Ji Yu M rushed to Seo Ha's house. She was afraid that when Seo Ha knew that the accident was not an accident, he would panic. But it seems like there's no one in his house right now. When he called Du Yun, he didn't know where Seo Ha was. After hanging up, Du Yun received an invitation to dinner from Cho Won, but Du Yun tried to muster up the courage to refuse. Actually, Du Yun also likes Cho Won, but he hides it from anyone, because in front of his classmates, they all called him Seo Ha's secretary. Du Yun therefore felt very embarrassed. If only he and Cho Won were together. He didn't know what other malicious rumors they'll be saying later. It's enough for him to be like this alone. 
That night Du Yun and Seo Ha went out together to talk. Seo Ha didn't understand why Du Yun didn't tell him about his father being a driver that year. Du Yun said that telling the story would not change anything. Do you consider me your friend? We've never been friends before, I'm just your secretary. Words were exchanged for a while before the two started fighting. After calming down, Du Yun said that his father died from a normal accident. But my classmates' words were too cruel. Seo Ha immediately understood the problem. Seo Ha walked home and saw Ji Yuem sitting in front of the door. It looked like Ji Yuem had been waiting for him here for a long time. Seeing him return, Ji Yuem stood up and ran closer to Seo Ha. Seo Ha thought for a while then told Ji Yuem to hug her. At that moment, Min Ji Ai was staring intently at the bell. Du Yun, after fighting with Seo Ha, ran to the pub and got drunk. Cho Wan knew the situation and proactively came to pick him up. Du Yun was really drunk. He grabbed Cho Wan's face and slowly pulled it towards him. Early the next morning, Du Yun woke up and only remembered last night's kiss. He forgot everything else. Cho Wan here was extremely embarrassed thinking about what happened last night. In fact, something else happened last night. Seo Ha's father thought for a long time, then ordered his subordinates to deal with the boss. The subordinate came to threaten the boss and told him to go live abroad. Early the next morning he prepared his luggage to go as planned. But he already had enough evidence about the car accident that year. That night Seo Ha went home to eat. The uncle heard that he was running a hotel business and said that the hotel had nothing to do but manage it. When Seo Ha heard these things, she immediately felt unhappy. He took off his hearing aid and pretended not to hear anything. The uncle next to him reminded him to put on his hearing aid. Because he didn't feel very comfortable, he used the excuse of not feeling well to leave, but his father ordered him to sit down. It seems that this meal is not simply about eating together. Seo Ha still insisted on leaving. As soon as he stepped down to the first floor, the previously quiet party immediately became extremely bustling. At the same time, the boss called him. He said the killer and Seo Ha's relationship was very close. That person is from MI group. Could it be one of the people sitting on the second floor? Hearing this news, Seo Ha threw herself into the lake. The passing of his beloved sister and his best friend's father were all caused by one person. At the same time, Cho Wan go to your house to find Ji Yuem. At first she thought that Ae Kyung still didn't know Ji Yuem's secret. So she explained that the two were just normal friends. But Ji Yuem stood up and admitted that Ae Kyung knew everything. But every time the story of reincarnation is mentioned, Min Ji Ai appears. Ji Yuem couldn't help but notice this guy. Not long after, Du Yun also received a message from Cho Wan. Du Yun quickly went to Ae Kyung's house. It turns out that Cho Wan drank too much and just wanted Du Yun to come pick her up. However, at this time Du Yun received another phone call. Seo Ha sadly wandered on the street. Ji Yuem drove to pick up Seo Ha. For no reason at all, Ji Yuem stepped forward and hugged Seo Ha. Seo Ha kissed Ji Yuem. When Seo Ha calmed down, he didn't know how to explain her actions just now. However, Ji Yuem pulled Seo Ha closer to her. The two of them kissed passionately again. Thanks to love, Seo Ha has found himself again. Ji Yuem told him to go home and rest to warm his body first. Ji Yuem even considerately fastened Seo Ha's seatbelt. Even though no one said a word the whole way, their relationship got one step closer. And Du Yun is trying to get Cho Wan to take the soft car home. Cho Wan stood on tiptoe and placed a kiss on his lips. But before he could get anywhere, she fell asleep. Du Yun also remembered that kiss that day. In the end, he still couldn't help but hug Cho Wan tightly in his arms. Suddenly Cho Wan woke up. She was alone and walked towards her house. Not long after walking, he fell down again. After falling, she stood up and walked towards her house. At the same time, Ji Yuem picked up Seo Ha's book to read. Suddenly a flower petal fell onto Ji Yuem's dress. Those are the flower petals Seo Ha picked up when he missed his sister so much. Ji Yuem rushed into the room and hugged Seo Ha tightly. This is the second time she officially confessed her love to Seo Ha. I like you but please wait for me a bit. The third time you confess, let me do it. When the two were about to make love, Ji Yuem received a phone call from her brother. What situation is this? After learning that his brother knew Seo Ha, he immediately ran home. After talking for a while, Ji Yuem also knew that it was his brother who gave Seo Ha the information about the accident that year. In fact, in Ji Yuem's heart, she wanted to know who the murderer was. Over here, A Kyung's illness is getting worse. But she was still angry that Min Ji Ai couldn't tell this to Ji Yuem. Ji Yuem goes to see Min Ji Ai and confesses that he saw his bell. But Min Ji Ai didn't answer but sat down next to Ji Yuem. It turns out that Min Ji Ai and Ji Yuem are the same. This is his 23rd life. Because each time they reincarnate, they only remember a few pieces of memory. And these bells will help them connect the pieces of memory together. If you want to know why you change lives so many times, you have to look back from your first life. So Ji Yuem carefully took the bell. Over here. Du Yun is reporting the situation to Seo Ha's father, but now he knows his son is investigating the circumstances of that year's accident. 
he told Du Yun to stop Sioha from doing crazy things. Moreover, from now on, you will have to report every day. Du Yun soon learned that his father's death was not accidental. That's why he patiently stayed in this company. Over here, Sioha's uncle came to see him. From the outside, he seems to care very much about his nephew. However, while Sioha went upstairs, he immediately looked at Sioha's phone, looking at Sioha's call log, making the uncle bewildered and surprised. Sho Wan put on beautiful makeup and surprised Du Yun. But Du Yun still tried to act like he didn't care about her. Seeing that, Sho Wan called Du Yun aside to talk privately. What she wants to know is whether Du Yun likes her or not. That's right, Du Yun liked Cho Wan but he has no intention of dating her. After hearing his reason, everyone felt extremely sad. When returning office, he felt like something wasn't quite right, so he texted GUM to go out and talk privately. Du Yun reminds GUM to moderate his actions a bit at work. If something like that happens to you, I will reveal your true identity. But unexpectedly, GUM was extremely excited, because that means Du Yun believed in reincarnation. When he finished talking with Du Yun and turned around, GUM saw the short-haired girl Hana. GUM now realizes that this girl also has memories from the previous life. And the only person who calls GUM like that is Sioha's mother. Just like that, the two people found each other. At the same time, Sioha received a phone call from the boss of the Lone Shark. That side also said they had evidence about the traffic jam. Sioha heard that and immediately went to the Lone Shark's company. But when he arrived, he opened the door and only a pile of ruins remained. Suddenly he saw a figure passing by. Sioha ran after the figure. It turned out that GUM was worried about him so she chased him here. Sioha was extremely worried, afraid that GUM would get hurt because of him. The two of them were on their way home. Sioha receives a phone call from the boss. He told Sioha to wait a moment so he could send him the address. But only Sioha can come here. But Sioha doesn't know how to drive. GUM offers to take him there. But they did not know that the boss's car had a tracking device installed. These two masked men are preparing to deal with them. GUM takes Sioha to her destination. Watching his back leave, memories of her first life reappeared. Before waiting for GUM to react, a series of memories kept rushing into GUM's head. Could it be that Sioha was destined for her in her first life? To clarify this fate, GUM chooses to move to Sioha's place. Sioha here is walking to the appointed location. As soon as I stepped inside, suddenly someone was thrown from above. Sioha came closer to see that it was the lawn shark owner, but the perpetrator had not yet escaped. Sioha chased after him, but unfortunately was attacked by one. GUM had just entered the building. She was confused, thinking that the person who fell was Sioha. GUM was confused and stood on the spot. At this moment, Sioha appeared and hugged GUM tightly. Very quickly the police arrived and sealed off the place. The lawn shark's younger brother also appeared at the crime scene. And the bald uncle is also here. That night, the secretary came to report to Sioha's father. The lawn shark boss's case will be considered a suicide. He immediately calls Sioha's uncle. Inform him that things are getting extremely complicated. At the same time, he also called GUM to come over to talk. Sioha's father pulled out an envelope and put it on the table. GUM didn't understand what he meant by that. Sioha almost died when she was young. Sioha's father said that he had his own way to protect his son. GUM's job is just to keep her mouth shut. Do you know who the murderer is? But Sioha's father did not answer directly and told GUM to go. A Kyung and Minji Ai's relationship is becoming more and more exciting. She is a good person. A Kyung told Minji Ai to eat whatever she wants to eat so she can make it for her. Coincidentally, GUM overheard that conversation. GUM joked that it was as if Minji Ai was her aunt's son. GUM conveniently bought A Kyung a yellow shirt. That made A Kyung feel extremely touched. Then she called Minji Ai to the backyard to talk. She told Min Ji about seeing the image of her first life again. The man she met in her previous life is an extremely important person in her current life. Hearing this, Min Ji was a bit disappointed. GUM suddenly asked him, Is it a coincidence that you came here? Min Ji tells GUM to hold the bell again. That way she can clarify everything. GUM holds the bell and thinks about a thousand years ago. At that time, she was a silk worker, looking solid behind a man who looked very similar to Sioha. His smile back then was extremely radiant. The two also met on the bridge. At this point, GUM put down the bell and affirmed that Sioha was his destiny, then got up and left Min Ji's room. However, she only saw half of the memory. In her first life, the person GUM liked was Min Ji, and Sioha in her first life was the murderer of Min Ji. No wonder Min Ji insisted on wanting GUM to remember her first life. Here, the lawn shark's brother brought a bag to Sioha's door. It turned out that when the thugs arrived, the boss told his younger brother to go first. That's why he kept his life. To repay his gratitude, he decided to go find Sioha and give him the evidence. Sioha received a letter that said our brother was not the murderer. 
When reading the letter, it turned out that Siyoha's father was the perpetrator of the case. After reading it, Siyoha felt a bit shocked. He remembered what Ji Yuem once said, the fate of a previous life will allow two people to become relatives in this life. We should cut off the relationship soon. This couldn't help but make Siyoha a little suspicious. Could it be that Ji Yuem already knew about the accident that year? Siyoha couldn't help but suspect that Ji Yuem approached her for a purpose. Coincidentally, Ji Yuem called Siyoha at this time. Ji Yuem told Siyoha that the two of them had a relationship a thousand years ago. She was extremely excited. Ji Yuem guessed that because of fate that year, the two of them only met now. However, now Siyoha's heart is extremely clear. He really doesn't want Ji Yuem to be related to his deceased sister, but Ji Yuem did not understand the meaning of this statement. Siyoha really doesn't want to reincarnate anymore. I hope the two of you can peacefully spend your days together in this life. Early the next morning Siyoha put Ji Yuem's CV in the folder the boss gave her as a loan shark. When going to work, Ji Yuem feels that Siyoha is not the same as usual. It seems like you are very stressed right now. At this moment the company phone rang, it's none other than Ji Yuem's father. Ji Yuem ran to the main hall and saw his father lying on the sofa. He took of the coat while scolding his daughter. As a sister, she should be able to take care of her brother, at least take care of him three meals a day. But his main idea was that he wanted Ji Yuem to arrange a hotel room for him. Ji Yuem angrily says get out of here before I scream at you. The father was about to swing his hand to hit Ji Yuem when she stopped him, then kick him out of the hotel. But these scenes were all seen by Siyoha. All doubts in his mind gradually disappeared. Siyoha invited Ji Yuem to come eat with her after work. However, she don't know why Siyoha changed so quickly, but Ji Yuem still felt very happy. On this side, Han Na brought a bouquet of flowers to give to Director Jang, but the card inside made her extremely startled. This is my favorite flower, do you remember? Director Jang quickly threw the flowers on the table. It's turned out when Siyoha's mother had not yet passed away and loved this flower. Its meaning is long life and good health. This bouquet of flowers made Director Jang extremely scared. On this side, Ji Yuem confessed to Siyoha that the man from before was his father. From childhood to adulthood, in her eyes, that man was a gambling addict. When she was 10 years old, she could not sleep peacefully every night. When she couldn't bear it anymore, she left home and received A. Kyung's tolerance. Obviously they are not related. But A. Kyung cares about Ji Yuem's every feeling. When Ji Yuem achieves something, A. Kyung is even happier than her. Siyoha tells her to put her family aside. From now on, it's just the two of us. Ji Yuem thought that Siyoha was encouraging him so he didn't think much of it. After eating, Ji Yuem went upstairs to prepare to hide the gift she prepared for Siyoha, accidentally discovered a briefcase in the corner of the house. Out of curiosity, Ji Yuem opened it and found out who killed him in his previous life. Ji Yuem finally understood the meaning of Siyoha's last sentence. Ji Yuem went downstairs to hug Siyoha tightly. Ji Yuem then went home and asked his father if he knew anything about the accident in 1998. It turned out that he owed a lot of money that year. There was a boss who paid his debt and told him to do something for him. Because of reluctance, Ji Yuem's father had to do so. But the collision left two people dead and one injured. He has no remorse at all. He also told Ji Yuem not to talk about this to anyone, that's the best way for everyone. Ji Yuem felt extremely disappointed because of this man. After adjusting my emotions, Ji Yuem tells his inhumane father this is the last time the two will see each other. After saying that, he turned around and left. But the father remembered that he was driving that year and did not understand why the car's brakes failed. After the accident occurred, he did not report to the police but chose to run away. Siyoha burned all of her resume. As he was pouring everything into the fire, suddenly, a reel of tape fell out of the bag. The date on the tape is the exact date the accident occurred. At the same time, Ji Yuem goes to Hana to find out who at MI Group could be the killer. Hana thought that when she passed away, that person only wanted to deal with Siyoha, if he did that he could easily take it all away. Director Jang? So Ji Yuem immediately went to find Director Jang. Ji Yuem suspects that she is the person behind the accident that year, because not long ago Siyoha's father gave her some hush money. The goal is to keep Ji Yuem from talking about this outside. However, Director Jang said that because the boy was almost lost his life, that's why he did it to protect his son. The story sounds extremely romantic, but Director Jang said that he would absolutely not do anything that would offend Siyoha's father. Anyway, she herself had to earn money. It also means that she is not the person behind this incident. Siyoha started playing the cassette tape. Inside, there was the sound of the boss recording the debt. Suddenly someone pushed the door open and walked in. The boss came up to say hello but did not turn off the recording yet. This man said he wanted to find a truck driver. 
Hearing this, Seo Ha was a bit incredulous. He played the recording again and listened again. At the same time, Ji Yulem also understood. Most likely that person is Seo Ha's uncle. It turns out that Seo Ha's uncle was the person who paid Ji Yulem's father's debt that year, but he caused a disaster. Ji Yulem left without saying a word. Seo Ha couldn't understand it no matter what. Why did he do that to me that year? Seo Ha couldn't stand this pressure anymore. That accident took away too many things. There were tears in Cho Wan's eyes because he lost his sister. Du Yin felt sorry and never considered him a friend. Seo Ha's precious and special driver uncle. Seo Ha felt extremely depressed. On this side, Ji Yulem immediately went to Seo Ha's house. As soon as entered the door, she immediately saw the briefcase. She guessed that all the documents had been burned, and also understand the pain in Seo Ha's heart. So she walked up to the second floor. Seeing a depressed Seo Ha curled up on the ground, his face was soaked with tears. Seo Ha said that it should have been me who died. Ji Yulem said nothing and looked at Seo Ha. She decided to relieve the pressure on him. Ji Yulem walked next to the piano. The sound of the piano just started attracting Seo Ha's attention, because this is the song she taught him in the past. How do you know the song? Ji Yulem admits she is his deceased sister. However, Seo Ha thought that Ji Yulem only did that because he wanted to comfort her. At this moment, Ji Yulem mentioned a book again. This was the book Seo Ha's sister liked to read the most at that time. At the end of the story the main character finds true love. As a child, Seo Ha admired the so-called immortality. But only Ji Yulem who has gone through 18 lives can understand. That's actually not a good thing. Now Ji Yulem understands that witches are not necessarily immortal. It's because she can remember the memories of her previous life. Seo Ha heard these words and was a bit confused. Ji Yulem told him the secret of where the key to the old box was kept. Then I left and thought to myself that I would wait for him. Through many reincarnations, Ji Yulem has met many times, and also witnessed a lot of people leave me. When Ji Yulem feels lost, that's when she doesn't expect anything. But there are things she feels regretful about, but that means no one recognizes her. And there's no one to share it with either. Ji Yulem remembers every moment spent with Seo Ha. Over here, Director Jang and Seo Ha's father are talking about the accident that year. Director Jang said that if there was a mistake that year, it was likely that this matter would be exposed. Furthermore, Seo Ha is also going around investigating now. Seo Ha's uncle was probably very confused. What if he confesses to Seo Ha? If so, they will be at an extremely disadvantage. But Director Jang told the other person to rest assured. She will handle this in the most peaceful way. After all, the two of them are standing on a ship. Early the next morning, Seo Ha carried the box home. Then he found a book on the shelf. As soon as he pulled the book down, he saw the key fall out. It's a real lock. Seo Ha couldn't help but think back to what Ji Yulem said. When Seo Ha was about to open the box, she heard her uncle's voice. Since learning the truth, Seo Ha's attitude towards her uncle has also changed a bit. Just found out that your father also passed by here. Seo Ha couldn't hold back the anger inside her. Ask if you two want to tell me anything? But Seo Ha's uncle and father drifted away. So Seo Ha left in an angry manner. That night, Du Yin was going to pick up his drunk brother. The stubborn younger brother tugged on his older brother's tie and demanded ice cream. As soon as this scene happened, Cho Wan saw it. Cho Wan thought the other side was bullying Du Yun so he ran into the room. After that, the two talked privately. Du Yun said that you don't have to like each other to love each other. Cho Wan understood what he was worried about. She has the goodwill to help him overcome it. Du Yun said that he had become used to it. But getting used to it doesn't mean it's okay. He doesn't want his affairs to involve G U M, so you two can stop here. Cho Wan didn't know what to say so he turned around and left. But she couldn't see the hand that Du Yun was holding tightly to ease the pain. Over here, Ji Yulem is going to the amusement park. Because the previous crew had promised on his birthday to take him to the amusement park. Seo Ha then wanted to ride the carousel. But Ji Yulem is more interested in his mother's family. Waiting until the amusement park lights were off. Ji Yulem still couldn't wait for Seo Ha. Seo Ha brings the box home and prepares to open it. Inside there is a notebook. The notebook writes that in this world there is a witch. Can remember all of his previous lives. But she is very lonely and many fateful moments have passed through her life. Everyone is afraid of her. But she also knows sadness and hurt. Every time she experiences such a life, a stone is planted for her. She felt very tired and exhausted. Seo Ha finally understood what she had been through. In the next life, I will still remember you. I will definitely come back to find you. Seo Ha opened the paper that Ji Yulem gave her then quickly went to the amusement park. Although Seo Ha is nothing special, he can help her ease the burden in her heart. He helped Ji Yulem temporarily forget the memories of her previous life, and live happily like a 12-year-old child. Finally, the two agreed to meet at the park. Seo Ha didn't believe that the sister he loved was standing in front of him. Seo Ha stepped forward and hugged Ji Yulem. It seemed like Seo Ha was afraid he would lose her again. 
Chi Yuan told Siyoha that whether it was her or his sister, she also wanted Siyoha to live happily. Siyoha cried like he was nine years old. Over here, Minji Ai comes to see Hana. If things keep going like this, Siyoha will eventually end up in trouble. Only when everyone returns to normal will the reincarnation story end. So the two took advantage of the opportunity before it was too late. Both try to prevent tragedy before it happens. But neither of them knew that GUM and Siyoha were walking together at the amusement park. However, inside GUM felt extremely scared. If we say anything, we won't be able to see each other again. Because Siyoha once said that even if she appeared, he wouldn't want to meet her. But Siyoha was just afraid that her sister wouldn't like her anymore, so she said that. The next morning GUM received a phone call from Hana. She was sitting next to Director Jang. Director Jang? GUM used Hana's tone to talk to Director Jang. Also asked Director Jang if playing with her husband is fun? Is you satisfied with my hotel? This statement made her extremely terrified. GUM tightly grasped Director Jang's collar. You just take everything. What the fucking are you doing? Director Jang pushed GUM's hand away. So, don't use my son to threaten me. GUM admitted that Siyoha's late mother had told her to do so. She always keeps an eye on you. She's probably watching you. Finally, GUM asked Director Jang to apologize to Siyoha's mother. Director Jang was terrified. Hana has relieved some tension. She suggested that GUM should do something important. Hana also said that having a predestined fate from a past life is a good thing. But in this life, there must be something new. She hopes GUM will make the right decision. Then she turned and walked away. GUM received a message from Min Ji. It was the location in her past life memory. She went online to search and found out that it was indeed real. At the same time, Siyoha went to her uncle, because you really don't understand. It turned out that Siyoha's uncle saw that Director Jang and his uncle were too close. Only cares about the company and doesn't care about his wife's illness. So he wanted to scare him a little. But unexpectedly, Siyoha was sitting in the car at that time. That accident was an accident. Siyoha advised her uncle to turn himself in. If not, I will act on my own. Just like that, the case from 24 years ago was searched again. Siyoha's uncle has surrendered. GUM takes Siyoha to a bridge. Suddenly, memories of GUM's first life were recalled. She remembered that at that time, the two of them were not passionately in love. But GUM took the bell and stabbed Siyoha. GUM also felt a bit short of breath at this time. But GUM didn't tell Siyoha what was wrong with her. Siyoha said GUM's health was not good so she took her to a motel. The news that Siyoha's uncle confessed is getting hotter and hotter. Siyoha now also understood the hot news that everyone was talking about. These are all other people's misfortunes. But that includes the sister he loves the most. Siyoha believes that just finding the truth is enough. Anyway, the deceased cannot hear the apology. Siyoha was extremely heartbroken when she learned the truth about her family. That night GUM saw his first life more clearly. She saw someone who looked a lot like Siyoha, but then it changed to the scene where she stabbed Siyoha. GUM woke up startled and recorded the contents of the dream. GUM went to Siyoha's room and checked to see if he was the person in the dream. But Siyoha thought she wanted to sleep with him. Just like that, the two of them fell asleep together. The next day the two went to a temple together. Because before, someone said maybe his past life was a turtle. Coincidentally, there is a turtle-shaped statue here. On the way home, Minji I called. A Kyung is hospitalized. Ji Suk informed Cho Won and Seo Ha to come to the party. However, Seo Ha did not answer the phone. Ji Suk immediately calls Do Yoon. But seeing Ji Suk's number, Do Yoon really didn't want to hear it. But he just kept calling non-stop. Cho Won here has come to the party. Everyone immediately commented that she was compatible with manager Ji Suk. Coincidentally, Do Yoon also walked in at this time. Ji Suk immediately mocked him, saying he should have brought Seo Ha here. Ji Suk started to talk and talk. But Do Yoon didn't care about his words at all. Do Yoon walked in front of the bride using formal words. Inform you that Seo Ha cannot come here. When Do Yoon was about to leave, he was stopped by Ji Suk. He gives Do Yoon a glass of wine. But Do Yoon didn't care and turned around to leave. Ji Suk always mocks Do Yoon. Cho Won couldn't stand it anymore. She scolded Ji Suk. How majestic is it to be born into a rich family? After scolding for a while, she left. Ji Yuem here also went to the hospital. A e Kyung is now weakly lying on the bed. Min Ji Ai says A e Kyung has been like this for a while. But he still helped her keep it a secret. Min Ji Ai also saw Seo Ha standing next to her. For a moment I didn't know what to say. A moment later A e Kyung also woke up. Looking at A e Kyung weakly lying on the bed, Ji Yuem blamed herself for not paying more attention to her. A e Kyung entrusted her to the doctor and didn't even know what the problem was. Even if you say it early, it won't have any effect. It is normal for the elderly to suffer from some illnesses. 
Life is a cycle of reincarnation, just like you are coming back again. However, Ji Yuem still doesn't want Ai Kyung to leave her like that. Ai Kyung must live forever with Ji Yuem without going anywhere. At the same time, Hana came to see Min Ji Ai. Min Ji Ai felt that it was easier for Ai Kyung to convince Ji Yuem. As long as the spring break is resolved, Seo Ha will be safe. And Hana doesn't need to be too accepting of the past anymore. It turned out that she had also seen her first life. Next, Min Ji Ai will show Hana the way and tell what is going to happen. Over here, Seo Ha had just returned from the hospital when she discovered a box in front of the door. He didn't see what was inside but called Ji Yuem first. I don't know how to accept Ji Yuem's committee. But Seo Ha truly understands what it feels like to have a loved one sick, so Seo Ha learned her sister's tone. The phone call cheers Ji Yuem up a bit. After hanging up the phone, Ji Yuem sat outside the hospital room. The next day Seo Ha brought the box to the company. Seo Ha and Director Jang sat and talked to each other. Director Jang began to talk about how much effort she had put into this company. Seo Ha also predicted that she would say something like this. Seo Ha began to pull out a series of evidence. It seemed that Director Jang was very interested in this hotel. There is also his mother's notebook. Hearing Seo Ha's mother's name, Director Jang panicked a bit. She held the notebook up to look. Inside is evidence of her stolen funds. Director Jang began to change his tone and said that it was because he did not manage the hotel well, but getting to this position was extremely difficult for her. It's all thanks to the effort that has never trampled on anyone before. Seo Ha knew clearly that Director Jang took advantage of his mother's illness and jumped in. He even used his uncle's weakness to threaten his father. That's why she can get everything she wants. Seo Ha didn't have time to talk to her anymore. Seo Ha told Director Jang to prepare himself to talk to the judge. Seo Ha thought it was Du Yun who collected these things. But he said it wasn't him. As soon as they went out, they met Seo Ha's father. Unexpectedly, this man was more decisive than his son. Not only dismissed Director Jang, he also called the police to wait on the first floor. Hearing these words, Director Jang immediately knelt down and asked for forgiveness. When everything was over Seo Ha came to find Ji Yuem, Han Na suddenly hugged Seo Ha from behind. Then he gave him a toy turtle. It turns out Seo Ha's mother once said she was a turtle in her previous life. When Seo Ha looked up, Han Na was nowhere to be seen. A. Kyung's condition is a bit better here. But still have to go to the hospital for further examination. That's why the store had to temporarily close. Ji Yuem told Min Ji Ai to find a temporary place to work. But it seems Min Ji Ai doesn't care about working. Instead, he asked how A. E. Kyung was doing these days. Ji Yuem also did not hide it and said that the doctor discovered that A. E. Kyung had a tumor. After determining the exact location, surgery can be performed. But because of their reunion, A. E. Kyung got sick. If it was a bad fate, there would be no problem. But because it's not a bad fate, that's why it happened. But Ji Yuem didn't believe it because she believed in what she had gone through. If Ji Yuem persists, the heaviest punishment is that A. E. Kyung will die. Ji Yuem didn't believe it because she had reunited with her relatives in her previous life. Min Ji Ai asked her and them if they will be reunited for a long time. These words made Ji Yuem unable to believe her ears. If she tries to do what she wants, the consequences will be like A.E. Kyung. Min Ji Ai said there is still a way and the answer is in Ji Yuem's first life. Ji Yuem picked up the bell and suddenly remembered his first life came back. It turns out that Du Yun and Cho Wan are her relatives. Because of an incident, Seo Ha and that life killed Cho Wan. After Ji Yuem learned the truth, she burst into tears. It seems that Ji Yuem has come to the brink of collapse. Seo Ha arrives at the restaurant. Ji Yuem sees Seo Ha and squeezes his neck. In her first life, Ji Yuem was a weaver. Cho Wan was Ji Yuem's older sister who was seriously ill at that time. I heard people say that if I steal the bell, I can save my sister. Ji Yuem had no other choice so he risked his life and did it. But because of that, Ji Yuem was chased by the Imperial Army. At this time, her sister knew that Ji Yuem had committed the crime of death. Min Ji Ai walked over and ignored Ji Yuem's miserable begging, criticizing her. Why did she dare to do such a thing at home? Ji Yuem angrily argued with the person in front of him who was barely breathing. What use is there in worshipping the gods at this point? Do gods not care about human lives? But no matter how much she explained, her sister still passed away, her sister disappearing before her eyes. That was the obsession that she couldn't shake off. Ji Yuem now knows the truth. The person she loved with all her heart for two lifetimes was her enemy. Ji Yuem kept strangling Seo Ha. Seo Ha kept screaming Ji Yuem's name. Ji Yuem finally returned to reality. She cried as if tearing the air apart, and kept saying that her sister was gone. And the person who killed her was Seo Ha in her first life. You killed my sister. It's me, Ji Yuem, look closely at me. Seo Ha, I don't know what to do anymore. Min Ji Ai stood outside and saw all the scene. Min Ji Ai turned around and left. Ji Yuem's emotions are finally a bit more stable. She told Seo Ha not stand close to her. 
Ji Yuan wants to be alone for a while. Seo Ha had no other choice but to stay away. As soon as I walked out the door, I received a phone call from Min Ji I. They met at a cafe to talk. Min Ji I admitted that she also has memories of her past life. Ji Yuan's first scene also had me there. In that life, there was also Seo Ha. Seo Ha said she wanted to do something for Ji Yuan. Min Ji I just said that it's okay to let her return to a normal life because only Seo Ha can move her. Ji Yuan looks at the letter that Seo Ha sent. Remember the scene when two people were hugging in a sea of flowers, and the scene where Ji Yuan gets emotional and strangles Seo Ha, and conversation with Min Ji I. Ji Yuan's feelings are extremely misleading right now. A Kyung is an example. Ji Yuan really doesn't want to lose her at all. Ji Yuan doesn't want anyone to fall into the same situation as A Kyung. At the same time, Bok Dong came looking for Cho Won to say that his brother cried a lot that day. Do Yun watch Cho Won leave without making a move? Only then did Bok Dong understand how much his brother liked Cho Won, but Cho Won is not happy right now. On the contrary, she felt a little sad. Now Cho Won feels that Do Yun is very difficult to approach. Cho Won doesn't know what to do anymore. When she got home, Seo Ha opened Ji Yuem's birthday gift to see. He finally understood that even though Ji Yuem was always smiling, inside she was extremely miserable. No one even talked to her. The next morning, news broke that Seo Ha's uncle had been handed over to the radio prosecutor. Dad asked Seo Ha that this matter could clearly be handled differently. Why bother finding out the truth and then destroy yourself? Seo Ha believes that the departure of her beloved sister and father due to Do Yun is not something that just needs to be apologized for. It turned out that after his uncle confessed, Seo Ha knelt in front of her sister's mother and apologized to her, but she said your father did the same thing. And she soon learned the truth about her child's death. And who is the person behind this? She blamed herself for not protecting her daughter well, but from this moment onwards she will protect Seo Ha well. Actually, Seo Ha's father was also protecting his son. After learning the truth, his father continuously blamed him. Because of him, Seo Ha lost her senses, but he also told his uncle not to spread this news out. Especially not letting Seo Ha know. So the next day he personally went to apologize to Ji Yuem's mother. At the same time, Ji Yuem at the hospital met Min Ji I. Ji Yuem suspected that this person approached him for another purpose. Min Ji I admits that if she wants to save Ae Kyung, Ji Yuem must find the person in her first life who made her remember everything like that. She must find him. Are you sure that doing so will save Ae Kyung? Can I trust you? Just try it. Min Ji I then gave Ji Yuem the bell. Please find out the truth of the matter and then come find me. Anyway, in the end you have to come find me. It turned out that after Ji Yuem received the bell and came to Ae Kyung's side, Ji Yuem really didn't want to lose Ae Kyung. After leaving the hospital, Ji Yuem met Cho Won. Ji Yuem remembered the image of the two of them in their first life. Ji Yuem couldn't contain his emotions and ran to hug Cho Won tightly. Ji Yuem believes that if the two are still together, they will definitely reunite, either becoming lovers or becoming close friends. But Cho Won believes that some things never come back. Like a tree. If it can't flower, waiting any amount of time is just a waste of effort. Maybe it's better if we just give up. On this side, Seo Ha was preparing to overtime. Suddenly, Do Yun received a phone call from Ji Yuem. She said what if one day Cho Won gave up on him? Why don't two people who love each other get together? When Ji Yuem mentioned Seo Ha, Do Yun turned up the loudspeaker. Actually, she wanted Do Yun to take good care of Seo Ha. Seo Ha was curious why she didn't go tell him directly. But Ji Yuem said she didn't know how to face him. Seo Ha heard that and immediately stood up to find Ji Yuem. Before leaving, he didn't forget to encourage Do Yun. Ji Yuem and Do Yun had met each other. Seo Ha without saying a word stepped forward and hugged Ji Yuem, since knowing that he was from Ji Yuem's first life. He also brought Ji Yuem a lot of pain. Seo Ha thought that no matter what mistakes he made in this life, he had to do something to help Ji Yuem heal his wounds. But thinking and thinking, he still couldn't find the answer. Ji Yuem said that he had forgotten all the memories of his first life. Even though 1000 years have passed, she won't be moved by the events of her past life. But having put Seo Ha in danger, Ji Yuem felt extremely guilty. She didn't know how to face him. Seo Ha said, are you still alive? Furthermore, when he agreed to meet a girl who still remembered her past life, he already thought about what he had to go through. Ji Yuem also said that she has a way to make herself become a normal person and not remember anything about her previous life. Suddenly Seo Ha remembered what Min Ji I had said. Seo Ha supports all of Ji Yuem's decisions. No matter what she does, he will support it. Ji Yuem held the bell again. Fragments of hate from her first life appeared in her mind again, until the moment no one paid attention to Ji Yuem's pleas. At that time, Ji Yuem's sister was almost beyond help. Seo Ha advised Ji Yuem that it would be better to give up, otherwise, she will end up like her sister. While the two were talking, the Josian king killed her. 
At that time, King Josian still wanted to deal with GUM but was stopped by Sioha with the excuse that there was not much time left. Thus, the disaster was successfully prevented. Only now did GUM understand that the person who murdered her sister was not Sioha. In the first life, when GUM was about to attack, Sioha stopped her. After being shot, GUM collapsed on Sioha's shoulder and looked at the Josian king in front of him. She didn't understand just because she wanted to save a life. Why did the outcome turn out like this? GUM unwillingly picked up the bell and swore, I will definitely not forget this day. I will always remember this resentment. Even if it's a hundred years or a thousand years from now, I will still remember today. I will definitely retaliate. After recalling all the old memories, the person who was always attached to the old things was herself. GUM realized he had mistakenly blamed Sioha. Whether before or after, he still cares about GUM, but now she has to go see someone. And Cho Wan is currently planning to give up his feelings for Du Yun. Cho Wan kept typing messages and then deleting them. In the end, I still didn't dare to send. At this time, Du Yun gave her an umbrella like the first time the two of them met again. Cho Wan because she has been bothering Du Yun for a while. Thank you for liking her and she will never be delusional again. Du Yun pulled Cho Wan's hand as he was about to leave. He admitted that he hurt Cho Wan. But for some reason, Cho Wan still tried to hold him back. No matter what people say maliciously, Du Yun is already familiar with it. Then the two officially confirmed their relationship. Ji Yuan now went to see Min Jiai. Min Jiai thought that after Ji Yuan knew the whole incident, she would come to revenge him. But Ji Yuan thinks that a thousand years have passed anyway. She doesn't care about the past anymore. Time is the best healer. Min Jiai thinks that her ignorance has caused so many people to die. Because of him, Ji Yuan has suffered a lot. He asked for Ji Yuan's forgiveness. Ji Yuan said that if it were a thousand years ago, he would definitely not forgive him. But now I'm no longer the weaving girl. Most importantly, she is living for reality. Are you saying I don't need to care about the past? Ji Yuan's biggest wish in this life is to live happily together with the person he loves. If the problem is that she is not a normal person, then Ji Yuan is willing to become a normal person. Ji Yuan asked Ming Jiai how to break the vow. But Ming Jiai wants Ji Yuan to know something. If once she forgets her previous life, everything related to that life will also be forgotten. It also means forgetting Ai Kyung, Cho Wan, Sioha. Han Na has also forgotten everything and become a normal person. Ji Yuan did not expect that the price he had to pay would be so terrible. But this is the only way she can be with Sioha. She can't do that either. Once the past is gone, she won't be able to share anything with Sioha anymore. Ji Yuan suddenly thought of something. She entered something into the computer. The next day everyone went to the hospital to visit Ai Kyung. Look at people from past lives being reunited. She felt a little happy in her heart. It seems like Ai Kyung read Ji Yuan's mind. Although I don't know what Ji Yuan is upset about, but when making a decision, you don't need to ask others. Just think for yourself and you'll be fine. Do what you yourself want. The smell outside the operating room made Ji Yuan a little scared. It was not easy for they to reunite. The only person she could talk to was Cho Wan, and Ai Kyung is the person who loves her more than Ji Yuan herself. Seo Ha is the person who has loved her for two lifetimes. She didn't expect that the time the two of them spent together would be so short. If she had known this situation would have happened earlier, she would have loved Seo Ha even more. Ji Yuan suddenly shed tears. Ji Yuan came to Min Jiai and asked him how to forget the past. Then she took the bell and left the office. On the way, Ji Yuan remembered Cho Wan and Ai Kyung. How can you not think about Cho Wan? From the bottom of his heart, Ji Yuan doesn't want to forget them at all. Suddenly Seo Ha appeared and grabbed Ji Yuan's hand and ran away. The two of them ran to the basketball court together. Seo Ha told Ji Yuan that she actually didn't like the story of two people loving each other but one lived and the other died. It turned out that Seo Ha had learned from Min Jiai about Ji Yuan forgetting everyone. Seo Ha promised to find Ji Yuan just like she had searched for him in the past. And of course I will bring Cho Wan and Ai Kyung along, but Ji Yuan is afraid that they won't be able to find each other. Sioha said that the two of them will definitely find each other and love each other again like now. Sioha took out a pair of couple rings from her pocket. Ji Yuan's job is to forget the past and leave the rest to Sioha. That night Ji Yuan came to see Cho Wan. Cho Wan gave Ji Yuan a gift that he had prepared a long time ago. Then the two of them went home to eat with their mother. It's been a long time since Ji Yuan has eaten the rice her mother cooked. After finishing eating, she returned to the room she used to live in. Du Yun was lying on a familiar bed when his mother walked in. Ji Yuan couldn't help but ask his mother why she still decorated the room the same way. Mom said it was to wait for her daughter to come back. Because she believed what she said even though it sounded very funny. But every time she cleans, she thinks of that saying. Ji Yuan wants his mother to hug her. She implicitly understood that she was her deceased daughter. But maybe she had something difficult to say that's why she didn't acknowledge her mother. Ji Yuan is determined that she will forget the past and live like a normal person. In the end, she did not reveal her true identity. 
Early the next morning, Ji Yulem walked to the bridge holding tightly the memory bell. At this time, Ji Yulem is in a forest and sees herself 1000 years ago. Memories of the past 18 lives also kept appearing in Ji Yulem's mind. Ji Yulem knew that now he had to forget the past. Sometime later Ji Yulem returned to the real world. It's not known how long after Seo Ha informed Du Yun to start planning to pick Ji Yulem up. That day, Cho Wan intentionally created an opportunity to meet Ji Yulem. Before leaving, Cho Wan also told Ji Yulem to definitely go to the restaurant I just introduced. Sure enough, Ji Yulem also followed the address to A.E. Kyung's store. While eating, she discovered out of paper towels. Seo Ha took this opportunity to give it to Ji Yulem. A.E. Kyung also specially invited Ji Yulem to come eat here often. In the afternoon, Ji Yulem was transferred to a hotel to work. Just like that, Ji Yulem and Seo Ha met at a swimming pool. Just like the first time you two met. After that, the two had an official interview. Seo Ha admitted that it was because she wanted to meet Ji Yulem so much that he arranged this date. Seo Ha impatiently confessed her love to Ji Yulem, making her extremely surprised. Why did you confess your love when you first met? We've seen each other many times, but Seo Ha intentionally pointed to the ring on Ji Yulem's hand. Seo Ha said that she would confess her love to Ji Yulem three times like she did before. The ring is proof that they once knew each other. Their love shows us if two people truly love each other. They will come back to each other no matter how many ups and downs they go through. Okay, this is the end of the movie. Please take 3 seconds to subscribe to the channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you again in the next movie.